Hi, my name's Andy Sykes. I'm an illustrator and animator, and I teach animation at universities here in the UK. Why not check out my website, hexjibber.com, where you can find animation and illustration by me, as well as more lessons in Flash and After Effects. Cheers. Hi, and welcome to my lesson on effects in After Effects. Make sure that you've checked out my basics After Effects video tutorial so that you're familiar with all the terms that I'm going to be using. So let's get started. So what we've got here is we've got a 720p composition and we've got this fish small.png. I'm just going to drag that into my comp. And what we're going to do is we're going to apply an effect or a filter as they're sometimes called and we're going to animate it using keyframes. So in order to apply an effect, you need to go over to your effects and presets window here. If you don't see it, make sure you open it from the effects and presets option here in the window menu. And you can browse through lots of different effects here, but I find it easiest if you know what effect you want to just start typing it in. So I want Gaussian blur. So I've typed in gauze there. To apply an effect, there's a couple of different ways you can do it. You can drag it onto the actual element in the composition, or if you want to be really accurate, you can drag it onto the actual layer in the composition here. They both do the same thing. So I'm gonna let go, and you'll see next to the project panel is the effects controls panel, which will pop up when you apply an effect. And here you can see we've got a couple of different options for the blurriness. The first one is how blurry it is. So if I crank that up high, gets very blurry and also the blur dimensions so do you want it to just blur horizontally for example or just blur vertically now the cool thing about these parameters here is they've got this little stopwatch next to them which means that they're animatable so just like our traps parameters we can keyframe these parameters so i'm going to set that to zero i'm going to move back to the beginning of my composition and then hit the stopwatch. Then I'm going to move through time. And I'm going to change the value. So I'll just bump up the blurriness really high. Then if we skip back to the beginning of our animation and hit zero on the numeric keypad or this button here to run preview, After Effects will animate it going from 0% blurriness to very blurry. So that's really simple. So I've been animating up here in the effects controls panel, but you can also animate the parameters down here in the composition panel. All you need to do is click on your fish small.png and instead of pressing one of our traps letters, what we're going to do is press U and that'll bring up any keyframed parameters that you've used. So you can see it's brought up the blurriness of the Gaussian blur. If you want to see every parameter that you've changed, press U twice and I'll bring up everything so you can see we've changed the position but we haven't animated it. So just to go over that again, U brings up anything that you've keyframed and U, U, as in pressing U twice, will bring up any parameter that you've changed regardless of whether you've animated it or not. So I'm going to press U so that I've got my blurriness and you can see I can move these keyframes around if I want. I could make it get blurry much more quickly or make it last the full five seconds of my animation if I wanted. I'll just zoom out a little bit using this slider here. So now it blurs over five seconds instead of two. Let's take a look at another effect. I can delete this Gaussian blur up here in the effects controls. And let's take a look at one called Collider. CC Collider here. Let's just drag that onto our fish. You can see it suddenly changes a lot. It looks very odd indeed. So CC Collider is a kaleidoscopic effect. And there's lots of different options that you can change here. You can change the mirroring. So do we want it to be an unfolding fish, uh, a wheelie fish, a fish head fish? There's lots of different options. So if we have a go at changing the size, that will alter how it looks. You can see that we've made it quite a lot bigger and we're getting more recognizable shapes from our fish. Once it gets above 100, you're not gonna see much difference. So I might just set the size to 100. 
but you can also change where the center of the kaleidoscope is by clicking this button here. You can see now we're getting a very different result. Or we could use these sliders here to change where the center is. So that looks quite interesting. We get a lot of fish faces. The rotation is animatable. So we could maybe do an animation of this fish spinning round. Let's just take a look at some of the other presets. So that's unfold, that's wheel, that's fish head. This is flip flop. There's lots of different ones. So let's use this one flower and let's do some animation. I've been messing about with the rotation quite a lot, so I'm going to right click on that and reset it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I'm at the start of my composition. I'm going to hit the stopwatch for rotation. I'm going to move through time to five seconds and then I'm going to tell it to rotate once. So this isn't layer rotation, this is the rotation of the kaleidoscope effect. So let's take a look at what it's done. If we do a RAM preview by pressing zero, you can see that we're getting a really interesting and bizarre effect there. You can have more than one effect on at a time. So if I go back and get my Gaussian blur, I can add that to my fish layer and I can have some blurriness. And you can choose whether you want the blur to be above or below the kaleidoscope effect. So do you want the fish to be blurred before the kaleidoscope is applied or after? So there we go. Let's just take a look at some more effects. I'm going to delete the fish and I'm going to create what's called a solid by going right clicking and going to new. We'll go layer new and create what's called a solid. I'm just going to create a white solid and click OK. And then I'm going to go to my effects and presets and I'm going to press CC. That stands for Psychor, who make a lot of different effects for After Effects. And quite a lot of them animate themselves, so you don't even have to do anything. So let's choose this one, CC Rainfall. I'm going to drag that onto my white solid. And there's a little tick box here which says Composite with Original. So I'm going to untick that. And you can see that we've now got some white rain. It's using the white from the white solid as its color for the rain. So if we press zero on the numeric keypad, we've now got some rain, which is pretty cool. Let's try another effect. I'm going to delete rainfall, and we can try this CC bubbles. And you can see that automatically animates as well. And it just uses the white from the solid to create the white in the bubbles. So we don't actually have to set any keyframes to get some animation here, but we can change the parameters like the bubble amount or the bubble speed, uh, the wobble amplitude, the wobble frequency, uh, the bubble size, and do we want liquid or metal reflection? And the shading type, do we want it to lighten? or darken, face inwards, etc. So these auto animating psycho effects can be really useful. Let's just try one more. I'm going to delete bubbles. We'll try this one starburst. And you can see it's auto animating, moving through what looks like a star field. So you can change the scattering, you can change the speed, you can change the grid spacing. So do you want them to be really, really small like this? Do you want it to blend with the original, which is white? You can change the size, you can change the phasing. So there's lots of different results you can get there. If we press zero on the numeric keypad, it'll show us what that looks like. So there we go. It's going really fast. I definitely pulled the speed down on that. Let's take a look at what that looks like now. There we go. So that's a quick look at some effects in After Effects. Have a go yourself, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Hey, thanks for checking out this tutorial. Next up, why not take a look at my website, hexjibber.com, where you can find out more about my self-published books, the Hexjibber Colouring and Activity Book, and the Hexjibber Anti-Revision Book. 
They're both suitable for kids and adults alike and are well worth checking out.